our next uh, step is to configure our callback functions for our button and uh, also see how we can manage uh, Fultic library timer uh, to generate notifications uh, at a specific time interval. So the first thing is that we're going to simply download new versions uh, of the header file and implementation file for our main window. So of course uh, these files have to be saved uh, in a source subfolder and replace the original uh, files. So this is the location on my system. So I'm going to right click and uh, say save in gas. I navigate uh, to this uh, place and just save and make sure that we replace the old files. So likewise uh, saving as for the uh, main window of course we need to make sure that we replace the old file with the new version okay so now uh, we can uh, open these um, uh, files to uh, see what is the content and let's uh, go back to the to the uh, new implementation file and also open the header file okay so both files are now open and uh, we can show them side by side like this mm, so let's now uh, build the program seem to be getting an error message that uh, C out is undefined so I think what I will do is just go back to the header file and uh, include uh, include uh, iOS 3 because apparently there are some uh, tracing messages that are printed and we just need to include this uh, iOS 3 header all right so let's build this And uh, let's uh, try running this application just to see what what do we get as a, a result of uh, uh, this uh, execution. So this is the actual application, and this is the original appearance of the progress bar. I never appear to have changed the, the initial label here. So when I click animate, um, it's really uh, not much happening here. The only thing that uh, that we can observe is that we're just tracing some um, uh, messages right here that display uh, essentially countdown from nine to zero. And if I click animate that button again, uh, again we uh, get the uh, uh, the countdown from a specific value. So this is uh, obviously uh, something that is animated inside the program but um, we will continue to update the progress bar in the second part of our, uh, of our exercise, uh, Laboratory 31. But right now, let's just uh, see what this button does and uh, what uh, can we uh, uh, see internally with respect to these messages being displayed on our screen. Okay, so let's just uh, stop this program and take a look Well, uh, so first, um, there is this uh, new uh, static constant uh, uh, data member in the main window that specifies the time interval at which the program wants to update the progress bar, which will be happening in the second part of our laboratory. So the value is specified in, um, in seconds. So therefore, if, for instance, we, by the way, this is where we have to initialize this uh, uh, new data member, and uh, we have to declare it as, as the member of the main window, and tick uh, timeout um, is set to uh, 0 0.05. So if 1 uh, was 1 second, then this corresponds to, uh, why don't we say, uh, right here it's uh, 50 uh, milliseconds okay so 
in our case uh, uh, 1 would equal 1.0 would equal 1 second and uh, 0 0.05 equals uh, 50 milliseconds so this is uh, a convenient uh, parameter to uh, operate in uh, second in both seconds and milliseconds and uh, we also have another uh, constant uh, data member right here which is also static just a pure constant value um, uh, set to 10 and uh, this uh, constant uh, is indicating the progress bar increments um, between uh, the percentages uh, between 0 and 100 so we're going to go from 0 to 10 percent then to 20 percent 30 percent and so forth so we're going to display our progress uh, in the progress bar with respect to the range from 0 to 100 percent and those will be um, increments of that percentage um, inside the progress bar now also notice that uh, double um, uh, variable uh, static uh, variable which is constant um, has to be uh, initialized explicitly outside of the body of the class in the implementation file uh, but integer uh, static constants uh, can be initialized directly in uh, in the body of the class by using the uh, the initializer like this so it's unfortunately not possible with doubles so doubles have to be initialized in the implementation file all right so um, we um, are also adding a new callback callback button animate so the button that we have that we can click the animate button um, is going to be configured to use this uh, um, callback uh, function and uh, so this is uh, this gets invoked every time we click the button so the usual uh, setup is that uh, we configure a pointer um, we pass uh, to the button a pointer to our main window uh, class uh, object and uh, of course we recover it immediately when the system calls us as soon as the user clicks the button on the screen so we get pointer to our window and the first step that we do because every time we execute the countdown uh, a set of countdowns we're going to reset the progress count to the default progress count Okay, so we're just going to reset it. So set progress count uh, is a pretty simple um, function, uh, which basically just takes uh, the count parameter and updates the progress count right here. So this is the value which will be driving the appearance of the progress bar. So of course it will be, um, uh, in our case uh, right now, it's, it, it's, it's, it's going from 10 to 0. Okay, so the next thing is that we delegate the call to button animate. So click button animate is a normal um, uh, handler for the button event. So the user clicks the button and we call um, actually right here, right? So this is the declaration of this function. This is the handler uh, for button animate. And uh, what happens inside button animate, and I'd like to uh, restart this application so that we can uh, talk about uh, the sequence of uh, calls that are happening here so uh, what um, what we do first uh, we call uh, when we click the button the button invokes uh, its handler right here right so this is the initial callback so then we delegate this call to uh, but, uh, click button animate, which is now a member function of our class. And this, uh, the only thing that this click does, it configures the, uh, the, uh, the timer that is available inside the full tech library. It's a full tech library timer that can generate timeouts at the specified um, uh, interval of time so right here tick timeout of course is uh, is the one that we uh, set equal 
0.05. Okay, so we've just set it to uh, five millis uh, 50 milliseconds. And uh, we say then uh, to the system, uh, to the timer component of uh, full tech library, that we'd like at this timeout, we'd like to get a call into call animate. Okay, so this call animate is uh, is the function that we would like to in invoke. So this is the animation function that will um, do something dynamically in our system. And so let's locate this call animate. Okay, so call animate is uh, right here. So once again, uh, the 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 system timer will remember our request as a result of us uh, clicking the button. Right, so as soon as we uh, click the button, uh, essentially we make this request right here uh, through the button click that we want to call uh, callback animate. So it will happen after this timeout. And this call will be, you know, so the system, the library basically, the full tech library, right? So if, if we have this full tech library also loaded with our application into memory, so the full tech library here will generate a call into this callback animate because we requested this, uh, this call. And so this call comes in, and of course, this also has to be a static function because um, all callbacks, um, all, all types of calls from the library have to be static functions. So this is a static function. However, it too remembers uh, our um, user data in terms of a pointer uh, to our main window. So again, first thing that we do, we recover pointer to our window. And first thing that we do is we call this function right here, animate. And we call this animate, and we check the value of this progress count. Remember that it was initially set to 10. Okay, so when, uh, when we uh, first uh, started the application, we, we set it to 10. Um, and uh, then as part of the button click, initial initial uh, button click was to set the progress count to default progress count, right? Uh, so then uh, we say if it's not, if it's zero, we return false and everything is over. So this initial request uh, to make a timer uh, notification is consumed. So the system makes this uh, call for us. And in case if the progress count is zero, uh, everything stops at this point. But if it's not zero, we decrement the count, right? So we basically decrement this count. So the count, uh, the count um, is decremented uh, for the next time. And we print these tracing messages and we return true from this function to indicate that this animation should continue. So this function here decides uh, based on the value of the progress count whether the animation should continue or not. But each time it receives uh, a call right here, the progress count is decremented. So of course, initially or eventually rather, um, it will become a zero. So as long as animate returns true, we call another. So this was the initial add timeout and now we call repeat timeout. So it's, it's just essentially does the same thing. So we place another request, um, request uh, to the library and we tell the library that we would like to repeat this call. So the call will come back again, right? The notification will be invoked again to this uh, handler um, uh, through um, uh, this uh, callback animate, which is, by the way, static function. And um, again, now we will check the whether the animation should continue and we'll just repeat and repeat and repeat. Basically, once this is invoked the first time, this is going to repeat itself, right? Because we say repeat, 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 and it calls us back, back, back after each uh, interval. So this is where sort of um, 
we're, we're, we're interacting with the library by requesting repeat timeouts. However, right in the middle of it, we have this check whether the animation should go on or not, right? So as soon as this returns false, uh, we stop the animation. It automatically uh, decrements the counter here so that uh, this uh, eventually this will become false and we get out of this um, loop, uh, you know, uh, not exactly the loop, but interaction with the library requesting to repeat timeout. What's a little bit confusing about this is that why do we have to have add timeout and repeat timeout? Well, the thing is that we really have to separate these two uh, simply because this is our initial entry into this sort of interaction with the system. First time we say, okay, we'd like to get this started. But then we just want to repeat the same action over and over and over again. And we basically keep asking the system, the full tech library, to keep us calling back uh, in the specified uh, timeout interval of time. So this is how this works. And uh, this is where the, the messages are printed. In, inside the animate, uh, we printing the messages. Also notice that animate is a normal uh, member function of our class. It's not static. So this is the chance. So here, this is where all the progress bar animation will be happening, I suspect, in the second part of this laboratory, because here we have access to the progress count. Um, we have access to the rest of the um, uh, gadgets uh, inside this window. So essentially, we can, um, we can use this as a placeholder for, to do all the work. And this is just the plumbing. And again, all the plumbing related to the library components is done through um, static functions.